Hi guys, and welcome to another video. Here we're looking at the first Heavenly Realms book by Jonathan Goss called Empyrean Falling, and another chapter as a bit of a sneak peek into the book. Enjoy. Michael had forgotten what a resplendent spectacle it was. Myriads myriads were arrayed in celestial regalia and vestial raiment, flanked by the cyclopean granite statues of renowned houses and the colonnades wrapped in great embroidered tapestries. The entirety of the angelic host was assembling in the tiered balconies and deep banks of pews filling the redecorated hallowed causeway. One third of their number sported red bands on their left arm. All of heaven was in the holy temple, except for a few. Michael noted their absence as he stood next to the black marble speaking dais at the summit of the forty steps. Adorned in their dress armour, the heavenly host twinkled and gleamed as galaxies before his burning sapphire angelic eyes. They sat arrayed in their tiered pews facing the altar. Behind the archangel on the foyer, the doors to the inner room were opened. The temple guardian stood on either side, barely visible in the washout of golden prismatic light, radiating from the white throne within. Michael stood between the two sources of light, bathed in the kaleidoscopic glow of the angelic host before him, and warmed by the holy light of the white throne behind him. His brushed steel cuirass was buffed and polished, from the waist down he wore freshly oiled leather trousers with knee-high greaves etched in silver flames. His matching vambraces glimmered at his wrists as he rested his hand on Virtue's pommel. His silver diadem hung forward a bit, ill-balanced as it was against his growing bun of black hair at the back of his head. His armour barrier, Zodkiel, stepped forward to adjust it. Gabriel strode up to his flank. His golden armour shined. On his breastplate was a winged trumpet. His vambraces were adorned in emeralds and topaz. His greaves were inlaid with pewter. His green sash had the seraphic glyphs embroidered on it, and the gilded band in his crown rested on his flaxen mane. He shimmered as a star next to his silver-hued brother. Still no sign, he asked quietly as he drew up. Michael curtly shook his head, still scanning the millions of luminous eyes stretching before him. The last angels filed in and took their seats, situating themselves amid their magnificently adorned comrades. Gabriel played with the wire-wrapped handles of the ceremonial twin sabres at his hips as he watched them. Gabriel gave the signal, the orchestra at the base of the forty steps blared their trumpets. The temple doors closed, and the mill of lowly conversation died in angelic expectation. Michael stepped into the dais and began the opening liturgy. Brothers, he boomed over their cosmic expanse. We've gathered here today to honour a long overdue tradition. This sort of thing should be old hat to you by now. He smirked. His choir laughed. Recent times have earned us hard victories. We laboured in creation. We toiled alongside the Lord to produce a garden for his latest beloved, humanity. How wondrous are the mysteries of the Lord, that we angels should share in the delight of his doing, only to unwittingly prepare the way for our newest brethren. What an honour it was to serve. And we're creatures that desire service, Michael continued. As I look out upon the expanse of constellations and champions, I see angels who know the value of passion and the merit of sweat and equity. We're not ones to sit idle. He dipped his bare brow for a beat. Our return to the prophecy has not been an easy transition, Sometimes it has felt like trying to fit an old boot you've outgrown or worn out. But alas, we knew not to forget the old ways. 
They were given to us for a reason. Faith compels us to cling to what we've been entrusted until the time of its ripening and the harvest is at hand. Thus, we gather here for the benediction that we might recite the litanies of each other's deeds in testimony to the Father's love, offer up their fruits and confess our sins. But in keeping with the seven-hour tradition, I'll spare you all the details, save for Lanthron's latest paintings. A chuckle wafted through the angelic ranks. Though I'm still waiting to see some intrepid spirit to step forth and take up that mantle, a deeper laugh rolled through the assembly. The road back has not been easy, Michael finished, but we've persevered, as the angels always do. And Father has loved us all the same. We rest today in the comfort of his blessing. I praise God's love and thank you all. Father sees it. I see it. My brothers see it too. Michael stepped down to the thunderous applause. Gabriel took his place on the dais. The Seraphim Archon's aide, Zophiel, and armor-bearer, Uziel, flanked him with a linen-draped golden bowl. My sibling speaks the truth, the Seraphim Archon stated. We are forever in your debt, I tell you. There's little greater than being your archangel. We see your prodigies. Your purity sends hymns on the wind. We weep with jubilee for such a mantle. Will the cherub Lantheron please step forward? Out from the forward elements of the assembly flew the tall line fighter. He landed at the altar, his full panoply of parade plate armor gleaming, and knelt before ascending the forty steps. Yet, Gabriel continued, to be a leader is to strip down and toil alongside those who claim no authority. We exemplify our roles when we're first to lay a cornerstone, not for the satiating of our glory, but for you. As you admire us, we adore you. In your hands, God has placed us, just as you've been placed in our hearts. Each depends upon the other. The hand can't function without the heart. The heart is useless without the hand. We are one entity, and I love you for it. He turned to Zophiel, who presented the linen-wrapped bowl. He removed the covering, dipped two fingers, and smeared the fragrant oil down Lantheron's long nose. This is God's love, Gabriel recited, which fuels the lamp of your soul. Let its aroma cleanse your sins. Let its warmth illuminate your flesh. He wiped his hand on the cloth. May your desire reflect the Empyrean. May your words give a faith a voice. He gave Lantheron the dais and rescinded to his place of honor. Lantheron summoned breath for his psalm. Sometimes, in the wake of a cold dawn and the shade of a waning sun, Sometimes, in the faith of whispered psalms, I feel my prayers long. For the hope of my burden's sake ebbs not a sinful wake. Sometimes, in these rusted halls of tears, you bind me to my fears, to cleanse the echoed vaults and entreat my soul's worst faults. For you I strive to recall the holiest chant of all, and herald the light that purifies these lands and echoes through clasped hands. Michael's thoughts wandered to their midnight endeavor. It took hours for the archangels to inspect the statues and whisk away their secret cargo of swords and shields. He was exhausted. His one hope was that the sacrilege was contained, but the sickness in his gut refused to wane especially when he considered Alrak's absence. For a darkness born of an age of listless sorrow cannot perform. In the eyes of a wondrous face that illuminates this place and shines to light these realms, these plains of heavenly grace. So purify these lands and wash away these sands with words that soothe my soul 
and echo through clasped hands. When Lantheran finished, he dipped his brow and receded from the dais. Gabriel again replaced him. Let us pray. He closed his eyes and bowed his head. The angelic host followed suit. Dear Father, we come before you humbly to mend our wounds and praise your love. We ask that you forgive us our sins, wipe away our tears and guide us in your will. We will give thanks for the honour of your blessings and beseech you to be patient with our hearts as we yearn for you, despite our blindness. Amen. He looked out to the choirs. My beloved, pair up with your constellation partners or your neighbours. Let the first sacrament be given. The angels proceeded to bathe each other's feet, with the high rankers attending their subordinates first. Gabriel washed Uziel's feet. Michael washed Zodkiel's feet. As they gently scrubbed, the archangels silently wept. They were not alone. When they finished, Michael stepped forth. Zodkiel held a tray of wine and wafers. Let the second sacrament be given, the archangel stated, and led them in taking of the communion. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to requite your love and heal one another through you. Guide us as a shepherd guards his flock. Grant us mercy, wisdom, and strength. Amen. The cherubim patriarch lifted his gaze to the heavenly host and squared his shoulders. My friends, the absence of my older brother vexes us. We are stricken with a malady. This journey is troubled. We stand on the brink. A beast has awakened our deepest insecurities. I cannot speak for Lucifer, but I trust in the Lord. Whatever burden has been placed upon his heart, I can only hope that you'll join me in seeking Father's will. Is the Grand Patriarch not the paragon of our species? Has not the exultant Archon led us out of fiery darkness to this holy mount and the sun's revelation? Are we to remain faithful, or are we to fall into temptation? What would Firstborn say right now were he to behold our fearful malcontent? A crash erupted from the far side of the hallowed causeway. The sonic boom shook the heavenly host. Even the archangels cupped their ears and cowered. Michael's ears rang as he saw sunlight burst into the causeway. The doors to the holy temple's entrance swung wide on their grand mechanical hinges. Through the aftershock soared a pearly singularity of light. It drew upon the altar to the forty steps. Wings peeked through its prism. He landed at the altar's plinth. His pearly armour was accented in ivory flames etched in diamond. His crown shone like a crescent moon. A cardinal mantle hung at his gleaming shoulder pauldrons. His eyes were white supernovas. His hair burned the colour of flames. On his breastplate was embossed an eight-pointed star. From his regal apparition came a kaleidoscopic light that shone in competitive contrast to the glowing radiance of the white throne. The winking auras of the heavenly host mingled and refracted between them. I would say you are correct, brother. A voice sang out from the kaleidoscopic light. Lucifer, Michael shouted as he rose from his crouch. Where have you been? Lucifer's light dimmed as he looked up at his brothers. From around his flanks came an entourage of robed figures. One cast a mountainous shadow over his peers as he stood at Lucifer's right flank. Another peeled around his left, slender and slinking amongst the particles of dust, dancing in the cascading beams. Behind them stretched a train of angels, all clad in white robes. I've drowned in the sea of truth, Lucifer replied. I've dipped my brow into the event horizon, plumbed its depths, and plucked the fruit of knowledge from its forbidden tree. He stared up at Michael. I've seen the grim reality that awaits our inaction. And what reality is that? Michael demanded. 
that we have been deceived, Lucifer said icily. Angelic breath drew up in a resting halt. Paralysis gripped the angelic tears. There is a treason at sea. Gabriel nudged Zophael and Uziel back towards the temple guardians and took up Michael's flank. This blasphemy must cease, Morning Star. Barely had the words escaped his mouth before he was ducking as Lucifer hurled an object up to their position on the summit. It landed with a dull thud on the dais and run raveled to reveal the broken halves of Hadraniel, wrapped in his white and gold Morning Star sigil. My name is not Lucifer, he roared over the expanse. He summoned his entourage with outstretched wings. The larger one handed him a cloth wrapped pole. He unfurled it and drove its haft into the marble tiles at his feet. And that throne belongs to me. A chill coursed down Michael's winged flanked spine as he beheld the black sigil of a white dragon rising from a bed of red flames, and on its chest was the infamous horned glyph he'd given to Mazarel. Michael bent a knee and picked up the old morning star banner along with the two halves of Hadraniel. His heart hammered in his chest. No, Lucifer, he pleaded. Don't. We cannot force God to give us back to the Empyrean. Only death may bring that. Are you so sure? Lucifer challenged. We have been cut off for so long. I doubt even you would recognize the difference between the Empyrean and the burning hells. And what is the difference? Fire is fire. How do you know there's anything left for us at all? Maybe it's something even more void than the Oblivion. No one can say, and I'm not willing to live a life of civility in the vain glorious hope of divine mercy. The White Throne is our only chance. It has remained vacant for a reason. I'm here to fulfill that prophecy. The path to hell is paved with good intentions, said Gabriel. I'll usher in Utopia, Lucifer said. No more suffering under the yoke of the prophecies. No more choirs, no more abandonment by a godchild enraptured with his new pets. We won't be forsaken. We will have our place among the stars. The White Throne will carry us. Stop this anarchy, Morning Star, his younger brother demanded. It's gone too far. He is a mad god, Gabriel. Lucifer's voice shook the temple. How can you serve such a maleficent tyrant? How can you excuse your cover-ups to your so-called beloved choir? I've only tried to shield them from the shock of your lunacy, said Gabriel. Yet I've shown them the truth, which is more than I can say for either of you. You've poisoned their minds with vain dreams of false liberation, Gabriel spat. Quiet your trumpeting dandy, or I'll reveal how you covert them for the sake of title. Cease this lying, and voice your concerns before Father, Michael pleaded. Not before those who are so easily affected by your influence. To the burning hells with Father, Lucifer rejoined. We are coals under his fiery wheels. We are his sons, Michael refuted and you his firstborn. You're delusional, Lucifer sneered, pledging fealty to a deity who not only doesn't love you, but will cast you aside for his new children. Michael fumed. How dare you come on this sacred day and voice such filth, Lucifer? My name is Satan, Lucifer unsheathed the black-bladed sword at his waist and brandished it. This is Hadar, the blade of our new age. The red arm banded third hailed him. At that, the slender angel on Lucifer's flank drew back his cowl. Michael's heart sank as he recognized Tempest, donning his shroud and domed helmet as he shouted. See in Zerit, Asteris. You damned fool, Michael shouted. If you do this, then we're damned together. 
Lucifer said with outstretched arms. Lightning arced from his hands and up into the blade of his sword. He pointed Hadar at the inner room. Michael rounded on the temple guardians and raced to their position. Close the doors! Bellator and Dialius hastened to work the gears and levers of the monolithic bejeweled slab. Michael drew virtue and turned as the doors lurched. Lucifer shot into the air. A shockwave burst forth from Hadar. The angelic host took cover. When the blast reached the massive statues flanking the assembly, the perimeter exploded with violent fury. Eardrums burst as the statues blew apart. Michael watched disbelievingly as the gigantic visages of so many of his friends and dearly departed heroes fell to pieces, spilling forth hundreds of thousands of obsidian-coloured panoplies. He gaped in horror as one for every two angels scrambled to the copious pile of swords and shields, picked them up and began slaughtering their brethren. A clamorous din burst from the angel-choked tears as cries echoed in ascension across the holy temple. The wanton butchery spared no one as Lucifer's coup caught them by surprise. A haunting cry erupted from Gabriel and he fell to his knees, seized by Lucifer's prodigy. Failing to recover, he buried his sobbing face into his hands, only the wailings of his dying choir registering in his mind. Rose burst red with blood. Bodies tumbled to their demise. The Sea of Angels was devolving into an ocean of gore, each wave of cries cresting with crimson showers. Michael witnessed the situation develop. The train of white-robed angels trailing Lucifer as wake fanned out into the heavenly host. Many discarded their robes, revealing the infamous black armour underneath. Several scores carried quivers and satchels laden with projectiles. They met with groups of fellow confederates, cherubim and seraphim alike, who donned red armbands before forming ranks. Line fighters formed phalanxes in the hallowed causeway and pushed a battle line towards the forty steps, trampling anyone in their path. Those in the white robes winged up to high obliques, clearing tears of anything living. They snuffed out the souls of their unsuspecting brothers and tossed their bodies over the balconies until runnels of blood ran into the polished marble floors. Into these breaches flooded honeycombed banks of archers, stringing their yews and knocking arrows. They held, poised and ready to send swift volleys to anyone standing in Lucifer's way. Dark armour or not, they were marked by their red armbands. From the uppermost tears, blood rained onto the obsidian dais, coating Michael's armour. He felt an overbearing thunderclap concuss across the murderous throngs as Bellator and Dialia sealed the doors and lowered their pikes. He watched with agonising palsy as angels tried to beat free their brotherly attackers, only to be hacked to pieces amidst a ravenous storm. Others took to manipulating the elements with their powers, Flames burst like fireflies through the assembly. Everywhere could be heard the scorching roar of fire, its answers jets of water. Cohorts were roasted alive, while some raised juts in the floor, bursting formations and herding them with gales so their allies could finish them off. The ear-shattering chaos seized Michael. Without warning, something slammed and sent him sprawling. Zodkiel was over him, sword drawn, and cheeks blood begrimed. You are right, Patriarch, his armour bearer shouted. Michael nodded absently. He threw a bewildered, curious glance to the dais, just in time to see a cleaved body crash from above. Check the skies next time, we need to... The cherub suddenly jerked as something pierced his back. Blood issued from his mouth and down the bever of his curious as he choked and gurgled. He floundered like a fish before being flung into the writhing chaos beyond. In the void, Michael's vision beheld a shade lumber up the steps. A roar erupted from the mountainous form as his eyes fell upon its odious image. It was a monster. Standing over four meters tall, the thing was corpulent and hirsute. 
Its goat legs and stumpy arms were covered in thick brown hair, one hand carrying a bloody scimitar. A coarse black mane ran down the back of its scaly neck. Its head was a tangle of fangs protruding from a maw, billowing sulfurous fumes. Yet something was familiar about the fetid anathema snarling through tendrils of gory drool. The eyes gave it away. One look into those burning red singularities, and Michael knew at whom he was staring. Mazarel. He surged over Michael with a chimerical menace. The Archangel repulsed in horror as the fiend licked Zodkiel's blood from his scimitar's curved, wetted edge. What's the matter, Patriarch? Mazarel said. Don't recognize the offspring of your sin. Michael stumbled back, clambering as Mazarel roared, his massive form lifted by membranous wings. The cherubim patriarch felt his feet go out from under him, landing on his backplate. Squirming, he tried to get his hands underneath, but landing was slippery with blood. His expression devolved into abhorrence. Blood sluiced runnels off the dais. A roar from overhead reminded him of the encroaching Mazarel. He raised his scimitar and bellowed sulphur. I'm going to make a chamber pot of your skull. Suddenly there was a flash and a clatter. Mazarel tumbled down the steps. Michael scrambled and saw a sprightly cherub with long golden hair and emerald eyes. What's the matter with you? Alrek barked at Michael over the din. We have to get out of here. Michael beat free of the trance. He saw Alrak Sivad standing before him, cut and thruster and kite shield in hand. He threw a frustrated glance at the scene around him. His wings gathered air underneath them, and it was all Michael could do to catch up as he sprang into the air. He was close on the heels of his protégé. The air was hot with violence. It tasted of smoke, iron and sweat. He saw battle lines drawing up below as angels loyal to the White Throne regrouped before the black armoured onslaught of their brethren. We have to find my brother, Michael shouted at Alrak's back as they flew. The small cherub nodded and the two plunged into the Holy Temple's battle at benediction. <laughs>